All right. How you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. And today I have an interesting study that came out. I wonder how long it'll be before they bury this. Asymptomatic transmission, that means people with no symptoms, didn't occur at all. A study of 10 million people finds. They studied 10 million people. And guess where they were? Right here at the epicenter of the problem. And a study of almost 10 million people in Wuhan, China, found that asymptomatic spread of the thing did not occur at all, thus undermining the need for lockdowns, which are built on the premise of the thing being unwittingly spread by infectious asymptomatic people with no symptoms. It just is not happening. And as far as these lockdowns go, what should happen is if there's a lockdown, the politician's pay is immediately suspended until the lockdown is lifted. How long do you think that would take to figure out? About five fucking minutes. More like two and a half. Published in November in the scientific journal Nature Communications, and I will link to that study in the description. The paper was compiled by 19 scientists, mainly from the Huazhong University of Science Technology in Wuhan, but also from scientific institutions across China, as well as in the UK and Australia. It focused, it focused on the residents of Wuhan, ground zero, for the thing where almost 10 million people took part in a screening program between May 14 and June 1st, which provided clear results as to the possibility of any asymptomatic transmission of the virus. Asymptomatic transmission has been the underlying justification of lockdowns enforced all across the world. So now we got this study, they should all be lifted, right? Mm hmm. Don't hold your breath. The cat dog cat, these people, still states the, that the thing can be spread by people who do not have symptoms. Mm hmm. However, the new study in Nature Communications titled Post-Lockdown Nucleic Acid Screening in Nearly 10 Million Residents of Wuhan, China debunked the concept of people with no symptoms transmitting the thing. It stated that out of nearly 10 million people in the study, 300 asymptomatic cases were found. Contract tracing, contra contact tracing was then carried out, and of those 300, no cases of the thing were detected in any of them. A total of 1,174 close contacts of the asymptomatic positive cases were traced, and they all tested negative for the thing. Both the asymptomatic patients and their contacts were placed in isolation for two weeks, and after the fortnight, the results remained the same. None of detected positive cases or their close contacts became symptomatic or newly confirmed with the thing during the isolation period. Further evidence showed that virus cultures in the positive and repositive asymptomatic cases were all negative, indicating no viable thing in positive cases detected in the study. Ages of those found to be asymptomatic range between 10 and 89, with the asymptomatic positive rate being lowest in children or adolescents aged 17 and below, and highest rate found among people older than 60. The study also made the realization that due to a weakening of the thing itself, newly infected persons were more likely to be asymptomatic and with the lower viral load than earlier cases. These results are not without precedent. In June, Dr. Maria Van Kerkhove, head of the that Emerging Disease and Zoonosis Unit, <laughs> I don't know what that means, shed doubt upon asymptomatic transmission. Speaking at a press conference, she said, from the data we have, it still seems to be rare that an asymptomatic person actually transmits onward to a secondary individual. It means they don't spread the disease. They use all these fancy ass words. It's disgusting. 
She then repeated the words. It's very rare. But we need to lock down anyway. But despite her word choice of rare, she could not point to a single case of transmission, noting that numerous reports were not finding secondary transmission on word. So rare means never. Her comments went against the predominant narrative justifying lockdowns, and at the time, the American Institute for Economic Research highlighted that she undermined the last bit of rationale there could be for lockdowns. She undermined the last bit of rationale there could be for lockdowns. And don't forget, she is a representative of this right here. Mandated masks, social distancing regulation, and the entire apparatus of compulsion and coercion under which we've lived for, well, this was a long time ago, nine months now. I think that that's misunderstanding to state that asymptomatic transmission globally is very rare. I would, oh, <laughs> I think, yeah, she corrected herself a little bit. I think that that's misunderstanding to state that asymptomatic transmission globally is very rare. I was referring to a small subset of studies. However, the new Wuhan study seems to present solid scientific evidence that asymptomatic transmission is just not rare, but non-existent. Non-existent. Given that it found no evidence that they identified asymptomatic positive cases were infectious, the study raises important questions about lockdowns. It sure does. Commenting on the study, the conservative treehouse noted that all of the current lockdown regulations, <clears throat> mass scoring requirements, and social distancing rules decrees are based on a complete fallacy of false assumptions. The evidence presented in the study shows that very rare actually means Never. Asymptomatic spread just doesn't happen ever. The lockdown lobby ignores whatever contradicts their narrative, preferring unverified antidotes over an actual scientific study of 10 million residents in the hot spot. All right, and now let's just hear from the man himself and what he has to say about asymptomatic spreading being the carrier to promote this pandemic. But the one thing historically people need to realize that even if there is some asymptomatic transmission, in all the history of respiratory-borne viruses of any type, asymptomatic transmission has never been the driver of outbreaks. The driver of outbreaks is always a symptomatic person. Even if there's a rare asymptomatic person that might transmit, rare. an epidemic is not driven by asymptomatic carriers. We get that? Asymptomatic transmission. In all the history of respiratory-borne viruses of any type, asymptomatic transmission has never been the driver of outbreaks. The driver of outbreaks is always a symptomatic person. Even if there's a rare asymptomatic person that might transmit, an epidemic is not driven by asymptomatic carriers. There you have it, right from the horse's mouth. So that means we don't have to wear masks, we don't have to be locked down anymore, right? Yeah, right. Okay, I will put the links to these in the description, and you can go through this. The actual study is right here. I'll put that in there also. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, the lockdowns and wearing masks being all over, you know, in a few few minutes probably. All right, later.